administration worked on the most significant border security bill in decades. Some of the most conservative Republicans in Washington, D.C. supported the bill. Even the Border Patrol endorsed it. It was all set to pass. But at the last minute, Trump directed his allies in the Senate to vote it down. Right. He tanked, tanked the bipartisan deal because he thought it would help him win an election. Which goes to show Donald Trump does not care about border security. He only cares about himself. What's amazing to me is that Joe Biden could have written a bill with the Republicans cutting taxes by 30% to all Americans and Trump would have tanked it and he would still have tremendous support. And when I am president, I will work to actually solve the problem. So here is my pledge to you. As president, I will bring back the border security bill that Donald Trump killed and I will sign it into law and show Donald Trump what real leadership looks like. But make no mistake, this campaign is not just about us versus Donald Trump. Truly, this campaign is about two very different visions for our nation. One focused on the future, the other focused on the past. We believe in a future where every person has the opportunity to build a business, to own future with affordable health care, affordable child care, paid leave. And all of this is to say, building up the middle class will be a defining goal of my presidency. Because we here all know, when our middle class is strong, America is strong. keep our middle class strong, families need relief from the high cost of living so that they have a chance not just to get by, but to get ahead. And yes, it is true that by many indicators, our economy is the strongest in the world. But while inflation is down and wages are up, prices are still too high. You know it and I know it. And when we win this election, here's what we're going to do about it. On day one, I will take on price gouging and bring down costs. We will ban more of those hidden fees and surprise late charges that banks and other companies use to pad their profits. We will take on corporate landlords and cap unfair rent increases. And we will take on Big Pharma to cap prescription drug costs for all Americans. Our plan will lower costs and save many middle class families thousands of dollars a year. But Donald Trump has a different plan in mind. One that would raise prices on middle class families. Just look at his Project 2025 agenda. I take it you've seen it. Project 2025 is a plan to weaken the middle class, be clear. And Donald Trump intends to cut Social Security and Medicare. He intends to give tax breaks to billionaires and big corporations. He intends to gut our investments in clean energy jobs. He intends to end the Affordable Care Act. To take us back to a time when insurance companies had the power to deny people with pre-existing conditions. You guys remember what that was? Children with asthma, breast cancer survivors, grandparents with diabetes. Georgia, America has tried these failed policies before and we are not going back.
and gentlemen, that was devastating. Now, I am no Kamala Harris fan, but I will say, although I would not be comfortable as a person on the left or liberal Democrat, I would not be comfortable, but I would be hopeful because things are looking really good. Um, the race is still very tight, and she's going to have to still fight to win. The election's not going to be handed to her. But I can see a path to victory now where I couldn't see one previously. I have to say I'm very impressed with her campaign. They've been doing, I think, a really good job with social media, the whole, you know, their weird thing and, you know, just fighting back, getting rid of the, you know, when they go low, we go high nonsense. I think this has been long. Um, they should have been doing this a long time ago. So good that they're doing it now. They seem to get a lot of traction. I see a lot of motivation, a lot of energy. Um, I hear... Well, first of all, Trump is running. Trump's afraid of Kamala Harris for all this stuff he's talking on Twitter, you know, or on Truth Social. He's afraid of her. He's afraid to debate her. The Republican voters are terrified. I think right-wing media folks are getting nervous. So, all that is to say the tide has turned. Now, that being said, so I'm not a fan of Kamala Harris. I have a lot of issues with her. But even if I was a fan of Kamala Harris, I wasn't about to be on here promoting her. And talking about how great she is and work walking around with Kamala t-shirts because I think that's highly unethical my subscribers come here to hear the truth they come here to listen to somebody who's nonpartisan they don't come here to listen to propaganda there's propaganda everywhere if they wanted to listen to a left-wing channel they'd be watching a left-wing channel they want to listen to a right-wing channel they'd watch that they want to hear a centrist channel they'd watch that whatever it is in terms of ideology if they were looking for ideological content they'd be going somewhere else they're coming to me for my honesty and for the truth the raw truth right so it compromises that if i'm going to be on here promoting people right that doesn't that's that's not right i'm going to be on here you know trying to inform people and in the same token i'm talking about trump is trash and he's a buffoon and then meanwhile i'll be like kamala is great you know and again i i don't i don't like her but i'm saying even if i did i'm not going to be sitting here making videos promoting her right that's propaganda i don't do propaganda that's that's one of the essence of this entire channel is really going against propaganda right so that being said I just want to make this clear in terms of expectations. If Kamala Harris actually wins, which still would be amazing, it would be a very close call, the biggest thing that she's going to deliver, that she will deliver, the one thing that she will deliver that you, you can count on that will be of tremendous benefit to the country is that she will prevent Donald Trump from being president again. That is the one thing that she will absolutely deliver. And that is the biggest value by far, in my view, in terms of what she brings to the table, is path, a pathway to avoiding Trump. Unfortunately, it's, 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 it's not a, a win or, I mean, it's a temporary win, right? Because all she's doing is pushing back the inevitable. Donald Trump, unfortunately, opened up Pandora's box. And unfortunately, in my view, someone in the future is gonna come around that's gonna make us wish we had Donald Trump once again. He has revealed how weak a lot of things are in our government, and I guarantee you there's someone much smarter than him who's not a buffoon, will be very, very clever, and is going to be able to galvanize both the left and the right, right? And the stuff that they're going to be doing, we're not going to even realize it until it's too late because the media is not even going to be able to pick up on it, right? So with that being said, in terms of her promises, I noticed that, so I see what she's doing. She's leaning in a lot of progressive rhetoric. You know, she's going to do stuff about Medicare and the border bill, and, and um, she's going to fight for the middle class. I'm not expecting almost any of that. She might do a little stuff on the edges. I don't know if she'll be like a, um, a Joe Biden type president in terms of she gets in the office and all of a sudden she's not talking about the progressive rhetoric anymore, just just like Joe Biden did. And then her ratings, her approval ratings start start taking a dive. And in her own ego and pride, you know, that starts to hit her. You know, she doesn't, she realizes the historic thing of being the first, you know, female and brown skin, you know, president of the United States. And being that that's so historic, you know, she would want to, you know, go down with a positive in terms of look at all the great stuff she did. Not only, I'm pretty sure she doesn't want to be known as just a, the first female president. She wants to also be known for, like, delivering on something. And the idea of her serving four years and it just being horrible and everybody hates her. So just like Joe Biden, I, I don't know if that's going to motivate her. And then all of a sudden, late in the game, she starts pushing for some of the stuff that she talked about. And then she's going to get credit as if she planned on doing it in the first place rather than she kind of was pushing that direction just based on the on the polls but regardless i don't expect her to deliver on a lot of stuff she's talking about for example the border bill 
Um, <clears throat> I'm sure she would go along with that, but you know, the GOP, they can't support that, right? Just like how Trump said, you can't support it because, you know, again, he doesn't care about the border. It's all about, you know, partisanship, not politics, but partisanship. Um, <clears throat> I don't see after such a devastating loss, them supporting the a, a tough border bill. So if she tries to push a border bill, right? If she tries to push a border bill, they're going to stop it. And the Medicare stuff, and I just don't see it. I see she's going to get in office and then yeah, there's going to be all kinds of excuses. You know, this is, this, this is a big deal. Um, you know, it's overwhelming and this and that and blah, blah, blah. And she's a little wishy-washy. So I think she's going to get, people are going to, are going to boss her around kind of thing. That's not the best word I want to use, but basically she's going to be under pressure where, and she's going to cave. So there's going to be people that are in the pocket of corporate interests that are going to be like, no, you can't do this and blah, 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 blah. So even if she, even if she actually tries with that stuff, they're going to talk around it, but they're going to say some excuse or whatever it is. And I just don't see her being strong enough to be like, listen, I'm going to do this anyway, because maybe they're going to scare her and be like, if you do this such and such, and, and they're going to go after you and the media is going to go after you and blah, 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 whatever it is. And then she backs down and then she comes up with excuses. And, and of course, the left wing is going to do what they always do. You know, they will galvanize and help to get her elected. But once she gets elected, they're going to sit on their asses. And, and the same thing, you know, they never learn from the lesson. They never learn their lesson. They're going to sit by and be like, she just got elected. Give her time. Give her time. One year goes by. Two years goes by. Three years go by. Maybe one little thing she does, a little thing she does there. Um, she does something, but not in the way she describes it. So I, I don't trust I don't trust much of anything that she's saying in terms of all this progressive stuff. And she's going to help the middle class. I'm sorry, man. I have no reason to, to think that she's going to do any of that stuff. That's not her background as far as I know. She's not that type of person. Um, so I think she's just using the Joe Biden playbook. Fortunately, she's using the, the, the part of the Joe Biden playbook that actually works to get you elected and not the other stuff that doesn't work, right? So the one thing that did work with Joe Biden is him pretending to be progressive and saying he's gonna do stuff about wages and whatever. Then he gets elected and then he's all of a sudden silent, not talking about it. And then AOC is online tweeting about random stuff and all the liberals are defending, oh, give them time, give them time. That's what I expect, right? Four years blows by. And the biggest thing you get is no Trump. And other than that, she might do a little something here, a little something there. And then you might get some bonus items based on her poll ratings being so low, right? When people are like, what do we vote for? We, we fell for it again. The Democrats tricked us into voting and with all these empty promises and yet again, they don't deliver. Unfortunately, if she goes on that route, all the Republicans need to do is not have a buffoon at the top of their ticket, just a normal Republican, stick to them, you know, get them through the primary, get them through the general and Whoever the Democrats bring up in the next election, I think they just get wiped out, man. Twice in a row, they voted for Democrats. And, wow, oh, man, it's tricky. It's so complicated. I'm just realizing that Joe Biden did end up delivering some, you know, significant things at the end of his, his you know, again, it's, it's, whoo, I think he was pressured based on how bad the poll ratings were. But how will the voters see it? You know, our voters now looking at Biden a little bit differently in terms of not so much in terms of that he betrayed and he said this and he didn't do are they looking at it like wow he didn't do everything but he did a lot of good stuff is the propaganda from liberal media and left-wing media is it working to the point where you know people are like well Joe Biden actually did do some decent things and then they're like content with that so somehow if Kamala even does a little something something just saving us from Trump will be enough that they'll they'll go with another Democrat again I don't know man it's it's 50 50 whether you know, we're going to we're going to put some DeSantis, you know, 2028, 20, you know, because of Kamala, if she wins. Anyway, those are my expectations. This is the Debate Me channel. Debate me in the comment section below. Click on the like button. Subscribe. Smash that bell. Be well.